Hello guys, Paul here. Welcome to another Race Department Token Drive. Today, I've gone back to Race 07. So we recently did a look back at Race 07 on PC and see if it stands up against modern race simulations. Originally, my intention was to do a quick video driving the stock content, which is the World Touring Car Championship. Uh, give a little bit of a feeling about the game. Remind people really uh, what it used to be like back in sort of 06, 07, 08 when uh, the title was first out. So I did that, very much enjoyed it. Really, really surprised myself about how good Race 07 still feels. Uh, in fact, if anything, for me certainly, it feels better than it ever felt before because I've got a modern rig, I've bumped the graphics up, I've got a decent steering wheel and pedal set now and I really 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 enjoyed it, in fact I massively surprised myself. If the comments are anything to go by on both the YouTube video and of course racedepartment.com, the article that supported it, it seems like you guys enjoyed it too, which is awesome news. And there's a lot of people sort of mentioning their good memories they had from Race 07 and the associated games that came in as DLC and add-ons and later versions. Quite a few people mentioned the wealth of mods that are available for the title. And that kind of got me thinking. I thought... Is it worth having a quick look? Remind myself what's out there. See things have improved in development, or developed even, over the years. And I stumbled across something I'd honestly totally forgotten about. It's uh, Andreas FSC has made a mod called uh, Super Touring Reloaded. And it's basically the very, in my opinion at least, the very pinnacle of touring cars, which is the super touring era of the early, early to late 1990s. Now, for those of you that are students of uh, the world of motorsport or old gits like me who were around back in the day, super touring ran across uh, a multitude of different national championships, but arguably the pinnacle of that era of racing was right here in Great Britain for the British Touring Car Championship. We had big names like Gabrielli Tarquini, Frank Beeler, Lauren Aiello, Alain Menu, Jason Plato, a whole host, a really Joe Winklock, of course, Smoking Joe, a whole host of real top drivers, works cars, paid contracts, outstanding racing. Super Touring really was, for me, touring car racing at its absolute peak never bettered before and arguably will never be bettered going forward. Andreas, bless him, thank you by the way if you're watching this, genuinely thank you for this, created a substantial mod uh, of the Super Touring era in Great Britain uh, from the 90s, 1992, 93, all the way through to 1999 which is arguably the last decent season of Super Touring regs before it got just a bit too expensive to race these cars anymore. He brought it out for Race 07 and has diligently worked on it and improved it over the years. Note, this is not Toka Touring Cars ported and tweaked. This is a scratch built mod and I thought I'll have a quick go on it before I do my next video uh, on a different game just to sort of probably think it's not up to par with modern standards and just relive a bit of fun. It's outstanding so outstanding that i've just got to make another video to show you guys those of you who have missed it or remind those of you who have not played it for a while or just give you guys that are still play it a chance to shout out and say hey this is quite possibly in my eyes anyway one of the finest mods in sim racing for any game in any era ever okay bias hand on heart probably isn't but I love that era of touring cars, and it's being represented so wonderfully well. So, we're going to do a race, maybe two, depending on the time, uh, and get a feel for what this exceptional mod is. I've done a couple of races already, and <laughs> it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. So I hope you enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, let's have a quick look first at the cars and the drivers included in uh, this fantastic mod. Now, for the sake of this video, because it's British Touring Cars, because I am a Donington guy, I've downloaded an extra uh, DLC circuit, which is da -da -da -da, Donington Park. We'll go on the Grand Prix one with a Melbourne Loop, because that's a nice circuit. And here you see, we've got this first one. We'll have a look at the cars. 
the 1992 season. This is the BMW. Of course, we've got some real big names. Steve Soper. Any John Cleland fan will uh, <laughs> remember Steve Soper. Tim Harvey, now doing ITV4 commentary for modern British touring cars. And Alan Menu making an early debut in the sport, would obviously then go on to become very much a legend, uh, a touring car racing and British touring cars, winning championships and races right through up until very recently. We've also got the E30 92, which is the older one. Some of you guys that maybe don't know touring car racing but do know sim racing will recognise this from mods, such a, sorry, not mods even, from games such as Assetto Corsa, where the DTM version exists in there. Looking at Toyota now for a second, we've got the Carina, not an attractive car by any stretch of imagination in its day, but still a damn good touring car. The late great Will Hoy, Andy Rouse, another legend of the sport with Ford, ran his own team, built his own cars, Andy Rouse, real, real big name. And Julian Bailey, uh, of Formula 1 fame, although not had a particularly successful career in Grand Prix racing. Vauxhall, of course, this is the 1992 season, so we've got the Cavalier. Later seasons have the Vectra as well, which replaced the venerable Caval Cavalier. John Cleland, a guy, one of my personal favourites, controversy, never far away. John Cleland, and again, sadly, another past driver now, David Leslie, uh, another legendary driver, substantial and impressive beard, uh, no longer with us, rest in peace, David Leslie. Nissan. Reoccurring theme for drivers no longer with us, we have Keith O'Dor in the Primera. This was the forerunner of the very successful Nissan Primera in later years of uh, Lauren Aiello and again David Leslie fame. Peugeot, another but ugly road car, but nevertheless still a decent car in uh, British super touring car. Rob Gravit, famous name, been around for a long time and still keeps turning up from time to time in different events. And then Ford with the Ford Sierra, which in this era, this was very much the last of the Ford Sierra. That was more the previous generation and was very soon to be replaced by the Ford Mondeo that went on to great success and in fact won the last ever Super Touring Car Specification British Touring Car Championship with uh, Ricard Rydell, Alan Menu and Anthony Reid in 2000. So that's the 1992 season that we've got here. Now, we've got a whole ton of cars all combined together, but we'll not go on to that one. So we'll go 1997. This is when British touring cars in the super touring era, arguably, uh, started to reach its peak. Now, unlike current British touring car and even world touring car regulations, these are not customer teams where they've, in British touring cars, they get the road car, they've got a space frame chassis, they've got a shell that represents uh, what the road car looks like. These are works teams. This is the Audi factory squad. Frank Beeler, John Binkliffe. Really massive money goes into this, massive effort, massive prestige. Beeler in 97, one of the biggest touring car names of, around. Renault, Again, sort of talking about the Association for Works, they had support from the Williams Formula One team at that time. Alan Menu, one of the established stars by now, uh, went on to win the championship that year. Supported by young rookie Jason Plato, somebody I particularly dis disliked at the time, but actually have grown to really quite like in uh, British touring cars now, with 99 wins to his name. Uh, fingers crossed, JP, try and get win number 100 before the season's out. Volvo, fan, fan favourite even, Ricard Rydell, legendary driver, and Kelvin Burt. Again, beautiful car, beautiful team. Nissan, two different cars we've got here. We've got the works team. This is just before they started picking up to be really successful. David Leslie, Anthony Reid, all Scottish affair. And then, of course, anyone who watched Super Touring Cars of the era will remember the Team Dynamics Matt Neal car that so famously became the first independent privateer to win an outright race at Donington Park uh, a little bit later than the 97 season. Vauxhall, 
As you saw previously, we had the Cavalier. We've now moved on to the Vauxhall Vectra, a troubled car compared to its uh, its older brother. Vectra never really achieved what it could do, despite having undeniable talent. Talent for John Cleland, former Grand Prix driver Derek Warwick in there as well. And this season in '97, the customer Cavalier, the privateer Cavalier, still raced in the hands of Jamie Wall. On to Ford. As I mentioned before, we had the last of the Sierra. This is the start of the Mondeo era. Will Hoy, again, sort of taking on team leader role. Uh, Paul Radisic, who became a massive noise, then went over to Australia and New Zealand in Super V8 cars. Won the World Cup, I think, if memory serves me right, where all the different Super Touring reg cars came together, again, at Donington, for a World Championship one-off uh, weekend. Really spectacular racing. I was there myself, very much enjoyed it. Honda, the Honda Accord. This was Gabriele Tarquini's uh, mount for the 97 season as he came back uh, to British Touring Cars to try and win the championship he took in 94. Later years, uh, Tom Christensen, Mr. Le Mans himself, had a season uh, relatively unsuccessfully in the BTCC. So again, great car, great team. Peugeot, but ugly car, reasonably competitive, Tim Harvey, Patrick Watts, who still races this car today in the HSC Historic Super Touring Championship. Patrick races the same car, the same, as does John Cleland as well in the Vectra. Uh, if you've not had a chance to see that and you're based over in the UK, thoroughly recommend it. Brilliant series, really brings back the memories. Opal, this was a an occasional one-off starter, that series, came over from uh, German STW, I think. And then page two, BMW. You see what I mean? There's a whole ton of cars. In 97, BMW had moved away from their works. Excuse me, works effort. So Colin Galley, privateer car, never really achieved a great deal. So, you can see, there's a whole ton of mods. That one, 97. 98, more of the same, the updated cars, uh, probably they arguably, for me, as a Nigel Mansell fan, the coolest, biggest, most amazing thing about this is, Arn Ige, again, Donington, was probably his most successful uh, return to racing, wet conditions, Mansell, thick of the action all the way through, fighting for the lead, then eventually dropping back to 4th, 5th, 6th position, can't quite remember now, anybody who's got a spare half hour, Go to YouTube, Donington Park, BTCC, 1998. Damn, that was one epic race. One of the finest boat racers I've ever seen. Clearly remember watching that. For some reason, I wasn't at Donington, don't know why, that year, annoyingly. Uh, really, really brilliant to see Mansell and the stars of the day, the stars and the cars, fighting away for the win. So, yep, that's what that one. And then 1999... Very similar set of cars. Few teams started pulling out by this time. Touring cars in Super Touring regs were winding up a little bit sadly by then. Uh, but again, we've still got a very decent representation. Honda, we've got two car models. What have we got here? So we've got the Gen 6, which is the current, the current de facto top touring car. And then the older Gen 5, which was a privateer one. Paula Cook, Lady Racer, Lee Brooks, still races today. So, you can see the effort that's gone into this mod. I cannot, genuinely cannot say enough how impressed I am. I'll just, I'll, I'll quickly flick it on for those of you that are not bothered to skip out of this page now. We've got, these are all the different cars combined. Look here, we've got the, the, the venerable 1994 Alfa Romeo, the one that Gabriele Tarquini took to victory. Uh, if you're not overly familiar with the history of British Touring Car and Super Touring Regs, you've almost certainly seen the image of this car on two wheels, Tarquini at Knock Hill. Uh, iconic moments, brilliant racing, uh, brilliant car. This was the first year the aerodynamic, aerodynamics, put my teeth in, uh, came into Touring Car, which sadly, as always does in motor racing, became the first early warning signs of the death of the championship, and then uh, Super Touring was no more. The 94, Volvo, a state car. Looks a pig. 
expected it to be a pig, ended up being a damn good touring car. Uh, Jan Lammers, Ricard Rydell, uh, Jan Lammers again, Formula 1 driver. In fact, in 2018, Jan made his final start at Le Mans, age 60 odd. So uh, a, a very robust driver has been around the block a fair bit. The 94 Laguna. I'm not, really should have been just done this in year order, but hey oh. The 94 Cavalier. One stunningly nice car. Smoking Joe, Steve Soper in the wicked BMW. Other end of Spectrum, a not attractive car, the Peugeot. Nissan in the Primera. Yours for £500. Early Ford Mondeo, Rouse and Radisic. And the 1993 Toyota Carina because. Those cars look good, upside down, Silverstone, dun 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 dun, and there you go. Now, what, pray tell which year shall we drive? I'm going to drive, no I'm not, there we go, I'm going to drive 1998, I'm boring and predictable, <laughs> I'm going to be Nigel Mansell, good times roll on. We've already got Donington, I don't want heavy rain this time, we'll do another video in the rain. 110, that's the top, because it's an older game and AI's not as good as maybe modern stuff is. In some respects, the first lap's usually a bit dicey, but after that the racing tends to be pretty damn good. Now when you watch this video, I would like to remind you, this is a mod track and a mod car set. I've done no tweaks to the mod, to any of the files or anything like that. I've literally installed, race, bumps, all the settings up to the highest they can be mapped the buttons on my steering wheel, downloaded mod, and uh, come here to have a good time. So, hope you enjoy it, we'll do a little token drive, we'll have some fun, we're starting at the back of the grid, so we're probably going to have a feisty few minutes, and uh, let's go, super touring car racing in race 07, hope you enjoy it, subscribe please to our YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, good times roll on, see you in the cockpit in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in the time it's taken me to load into the screen, I've had a bit of a technical problem. Uh, my throttle pedal stopped working. So, one hour later and a damn good clean of my Fanatec Club Sport version 2 pedals, I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, the power or the magic of editing software means for you it has been but a tenth of a second. For me, it's been an hour of frustration, annoyance, slight fr flustering sweat. But we're here, we're ready to rock and roll. So, uh, let's go. Touring car racing, 1998, Nigel Mansell's Mondeo, Donington Park, Super Tourers, back of the grid. Let's see what happens. One of the things I'd like to mention before we start is, look at the grid lineup that you've got here. Reed, Rydell, Thompson, Menu, Plato, Leslie, Cleland, Warwick. It's a nice, realistic looking grid for touring cars circa 1998. And that's something that I think is really impressive about this mod and the game in general. I've not done qualifying, I've not done practice. This is a grid the computer's randomly aligned. When you look at the back, we've got Matt Neal, the Team Dynamics Honda, uh, sorry, Team Dynamics Nissan, Roger Moen, Tommy Rustad, Mark Lemmer, Rob Gravit. The privateer cars, the slower cars, slower drivers, are at the back of the grid. The big works cars, the big name drivers, up at the front. And that's something I think is often overlooked in sim racing. And a really big deal for those of us wanting a realistic, offline, single player, championship or race experience. So that's really good. But now, I am Nigel Mansell. We are in a Mondeo. This is 1998 at Donington Park. Let's go. Super touring car racing. With a fully functioning throw pedal, which is always advantageous for having a good time. Now, I must admit, the AI are a little bit slow at Donington in the first corner at the top of the trainers, so I'm going to keep back off the throttle just to sort of maintain a realistic race experience rather than kind of charging through the grid uh, and making up one or two different places. A bit of bumping and boring trainers into the old air pin any of you attending the race in real life that's where I'll be stood so if you come to a big event at Danny come say hello up at the outside of the old air pin be nice to come and see you trying down a couple of gears missed the apex a little bit there's been a bit of a kerfuffle in front of us that holds everybody up but nothing major 
now we're looking for a run down the straight into the chicane, one of the best passing opportunities on the track. This is of course, because of the age of the game, an older version of Donington, so you've still got the Dunlop Bridge. We miss you, my friend. Donington's not quite the same. Lemmer goes to the inside a little bit and defends against me, but I've got the run coming out. One thing I've noticed since getting back in to race 07, mod or oh, vanilla content. The AI is really good in terms of how they behave and defend, but, 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 but first lap can occasionally be a little bit below pace, as you've probably noticed a couple of times here where I've either just ducked past people or come out the throttle a little bit so as not to steam past everybody. I've got it on 110%, but it is a little bit weak in the first lap or two, just while the sort of field spreads out a little bit. Can I look up Tommy Rustad's inside Redgate? No, I can't. Trainer Curse is not an intelligent place to pass at over 100 miles an hour. Oh, there, it might be a big ass, but we'll have a look. Bit of understeer, Rustad's on the brakes. No, decided against it. Old hairpin, despite being a hairpin, is an incredibly fast corner at Norrington Park. Really enjoyable place to watch all the sport. A little bit of lock in, slightly away from the apex, but we got away with it. And we live to fight another day. Down one here. On the pack, look at that, I like that. Even though it's an old game, the physics of the tyre model, the car's juddering. As I'm on the throttle, getting on the steer, the front end skipping over the tarmac, trying to drip up enough. Oh, no, think better of it, we'll get you on the exit instead, my friend. We come down into the Melbourne Loop. This is the Grand Prix uh, layout of Donington Park Circuit in Leicestershire, just outside Derby. The Melbourne Loop is here, however, of course, in the original layout back in the 1930s, the Melbourne Loop was a lot more further away, down in the village of Melbourne, hence the name Melbourne Loop. But for modern racing requirements, and since the track reopened again in the 1970s under Tom Wheatcroft, Melbourne Loop has been shortened considerably to uh, meet with modern standards. Although, the original Melbourne Loop does still exist and is occasionally used by Donington. Uh, demonstrations during uh, historic historic events at the circuit or rally events as I so witnessed just a couple of weeks ago in the British Circuit Rally Championship which is a novel way to go watch more sport rallying but on the track sounds weird it is weird but it's also quite cool at the same time so I've got the hood heads up display off so I don't know exactly where I am, but I do know I'm in a Ford sandwich. No. There we go, that's that front end, skipping over the track again. Got a Peugeot behind me now, and I'm chasing down one of my two teammates in the one there uh, on the front. Now you see, that doesn't sound glamorous, does it? I've got a Peugeot behind me, the one there in front. <laughs> it really is awesome. They are not the video for road cars that you have come to know and despise. Up inside, Will Hoy. Oh, a little bit of a brake check there by... Is that Peter Cox? Yes it is, in the Honda Accord. Goes to the fenders inside. No room for me. Show a nose at the outside, see if we can switch back. Yes we can. Put that bus on the outside for Red Gate and get it pushed out of line. Go back on the inside. Maybe we can make a pass a bit far back. Go for Daniel Ricciardo. Late on the brakes. Just come off so we can get him from. Ah, uh, we've got him. Right. I forget myself for a moment, thinking I'm Martin Brundle, talking about things I know nothing about on the racetrack. So let's talk about the mod. This Andreas FSC has worked on and off on this mod for a number of years. Any of you that may have tried it back in the day, uh, hello, don't know what I'm going through there. Schwartz curve with one hand in a super touring car. 
the front of that. Yeah. Anybody of you may... No, 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 no. Let's put the teeth in the start again. Any of you who may... There we go. I've tried this mod originally when it first came out all those years ago. But I've not been back to it since. I highly recommend you give it another go. Andreas has done significant visual work on the cars. And the standard now really is for the game for his era, very, very high. Visually, I'd quite easily put these on a par with the vanilla world touring car content that comes with the game from Simbin. The model quality of the cockpit and other cars actually is really, for its time, for the era, is really, really good. Oops. They look the part. They sound, as you can hear, absolutely beautiful. Bob Nelly alongside me now, the Mondeo, sounding very different to the Volvo. I think the Mondeo, I can't remember and I'll probably get corrected. This one's a V6, I believe, where the vast majority of the cars are 2 litre, normally aspirated, touring cars. And they've got that beautiful stream, high revs, gearbox line, that's, for me, so iconic and synonymous touring car racing, and part of the reason why the current era a second, the current era turbocharged cars just don't cut mustard just do not in the audio department sound anywhere near as beautiful as this, anybody again if you're on YouTube has got a spare 10 minutes, go listen to Smokey Joe Winkler again BMW, British touring car from 1995. That is what touring car racing sounds like. That is beautiful. And, and the sounds, this part, <laughs> they're really damn good. These cars sound a lot better than some of the developer produced content in other racing games of the more modern era. They sound great. Really good job. Really immersive. Obviously, Simbin products, the well-known quality are, uh, audio, many could argue race room, race from experience, the most recent Simbin slash Sector 3 Studios racing sim is the best sounding racing game on the market bar none. And even for a game 10 plus years old like this, a this is a mod designed, I will have to remember, designed and built by not a developer, not a group of 30 or 40 people with multi-million pound budgets, but a guy with a passion and a bit of know-how. And it sounds beautiful. Really good audio on this. Really immersive ads. Something that's so very important to cars in this era. Right, let's get moving on here again. Got you. All your Formula 1 experiences useless to me. A keyboard warrior set in my man cave. Got you, having you, pulling away from you, and I'm going to go chase Ricard Rydell, your teammate. Let's see what we can get from Ricard. So, while we're talking about the mod, we'll go to the all important handwind, force feedbacks, realism, physics, all that good stuff. Feels lovely. Feels really good, feels as good if not slightly better than the World Touring Car content. The understeer is really nice and pronounced. But she wants to be the... Oh, a bit like on brakes there, don't matter though. The touring cars, if you can't hit somebody in the back end on Undertaker, you're not doing it right. Yeah, physics feel awesome. Uh, sorry, force feedback feels awesome. Really good. Feel understeer. It's particularly good being able to tell me when I'm blocking my tyres or when the car is skidding across the road surface or when I'm getting uh, torque under steer because obviously I'm in a front wheel drive car the front wheels are doing the accelerator and the turning so the front wheels are working really hard on cars like this and they've got such high performance that it's really putting a lot of load and pressure through the front of the car 
and the way that's transferred through my steering wheel is mighty fine and does a lovely job of giving me the feeling that I need to be able to pilot one of these bad boys and have some semblance of an idea of what I'm doing. So I would uh, give it something a rating out of 10. It's always a dangerous game and I would be ill-advised to do it here, but I'm going to anyway because, hey ho, we're all friends, I'm sure nobody will go overly mental in the comment section and start arguing for no reason and leading to trick loads of fans. But I would give audio 9 out of 10. I would give force feedback. Relatively speaking, obviously, I'm not comparing this to modern sims, I'm just comparing it in the content of, uh, context, sorry, of the day, the year, and the game. Again, 9 out of 10. Graphically, again, all relative to the hero and the base content of Race 07. Another 9 out of 10. The car models look sharp. The cockpits look excellent. All the cars sound differently, they all feel different. Look different, of course, because the different cars I would hope look different. And then the AI, I would give 8 out of 10. Um, as I sort of alluded to earlier, the guys you would expect to be in the front are in the front, the guys you expect to be in the back are in the back, and that's all about the immersion, baby, and that does a great job. I would give it 9 out of 10 if Patrick Watts crashed in every single race and Julia Bailey also did the same. But that didn't really happen, so it's not 100% realistic. But, ain't bad. Ain't bad at all. I've not run far enough up the field yet to see if Steve Soper does something particularly dirty. Uh, but if he does, that would be a real good, realistic representation of Marie cars in the 1990s. He says perfect timing as he passes John Cleland, one of motorsports true legends. Fun story about John Cleland. I'll tell you this quickly, I'll be laughing around. Um, I forget the year, so forgive me on that one. I'm sure somebody with access to Google can, uh, can put me right in the comments. May have been 2005, may not, but. Uh, Touring car, again at Donington Park, organise a special Masters Legends race using, I believe, the then spec Seat Leon Cup cars. They were 14, 16 drivers in, or whatever it might be. Um, all retired former British touring car drivers, uh, varying degrees of fame. So you had Frank Beeler, uh, Anthony Reid, John Cleland, a whole bunch of real Will Hoy, real top names raced in this one-off event at the end of the day at Donington Park. And uh, me and a whole group of my mates went down. A lot of us are dying in the world, long-term touring car fans. So we were around when this sort of series were in its pomp. But one of our mates, time was uh, new to motorsport and touring cars when we said to him before the race started he says watch out for John Cleland bearing in mind the guy had been retired for donkey's years by this stage he says watch out for John Cleland uh, absolute legend wherever he goes yellow flag wherever he goes something controversial is bound to happen so we heard the car start we're at the old air pin bottom of the train occurs we heard the car start, the race began. Came round the top of Hollywood. They're all the same colour grey, see it on. Thought, hmm, which one's John Cleland? I think it started somewhere mid pack. And a mate of mine went to me, which one's Cleland? Went, ah, there you go. And John Cleland, first time back in a race car in a while. Round the outside of everybody, in the crater curves, up the inside. Smoking front tyres into old air pen. There you go, mate. That one's John Cullen. Round this corner now. On the outside of everybody in his 50s, not sat in a racing car for God knows how many years. What 
a legend. What an absolute legend. JC, never far away from where the excitement's happening, happened to have a chat with him a couple of years ago at uh, Alton Park in Cheshire. Clarence was racing the uh, Super Touring Vectra uh, 1997 era, I believe it was, or 98 it might be. He bought the car himself, he's in his 60s now, bought the car himself, he got all the Vauxhall works, signage in his pit garage, decked out like it used to be back in the day. He got his old Vauxhall shirt, and he wore his Vauxhall overalls, he even had his autograph cards on the table in front of him from the era. Such a well turned out pit organisation, and the guy spending his own money and his own free time just to race. Wow, some incredibly awesome racing cars, his son helps him prepare them, and uh, yeah, a legend of the sport, they don't make him like John Collins anymore. If he didn't like something, he went and gave you a punch in the mouth. Proper legend. One of many from World to uh, British Touring Cars in this era. Uh, happy memories, happy days. Really good stuff. There we go, that's it. That's uh, us driving the Race 07 British Touring Car Super Touring Reloaded Mod for Race 07 from Andreas FSC. It's available to download at Race Department, as we showed at the beginning of this video. A whole bunch of different se uh, sorry, different years it represents. There are additional add-on skin packs uh, for those set of cars, for the different national championships. A really brilliant mod. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying our look back on Race 07. Apologies for doing another video on it. It's just I'm finding it that much fun. I am enjoying making videos with Race 07. I'll do another one in a while showing you uh, wet weather again in a Super Tour. And uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good fun. I've enjoyed it. My name's been Paul. This has been RD TV. Really would appreciate a subscription to YouTube if you've not done so already. And if you have, big thumbs up. Thank you for that. Uh, we're also on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, so please give us a follow, a like, a subscribe. That would mean the world to us. Visit us at racedepartment.com. If you're at Sim Racing Expo uh, September 2018, come find us, say hi. Great to meet some of you guys and uh, put faces to names and all that good stuff. And yeah, I've been Paul. This has been RD TV. This has been a talk and drive with Race 07. Sim racing's awesome. So are you guys. Till next time, I'll catch you later.